Hello, it's Steven here, and welcome back to Apache NiFi. So in the last video, we took some JSON that we had, and we went ahead and dove a little deeper into some other examples on how I use the Jolt Transform for some use cases that I may have in my work environment. And hopefully it gives you a couple ideas on how you might be able to use it, because I know it can be a little tricky when you're using the Jolt Transform demo page, and you're trying to, you're trying to well, first of all, answering the question on whether or not, huh, can I do, I have an idea of what I want my result to be. Can I do that with the Jolt Transform or not? So hopefully it gives you some ideas on what you might be able to do with it. This does not cover all of them. There are many more if you go back over here and you take a look at all these examples. Uh, hopefully, like it does for me when I look through them all the time, it gives me some good idea on, my, on huh, I think I can get to where I want to get. Now I just got to figure out how to use these examples to help me drive me in the right direction. All right, so let's continue our example that we were working on here. Now, from here, we left, we left off where when we transformed it, we had all the signal loads from all the devices in that one test. And in this case, I want to kind of do a couple or manipulate and transform that data a little bit. So the way we, next thing we're gonna do is a modify overwrite. Uh, we're gonna use the operation called modify overwrite beta. And we're gonna use this to get a, to use the min, max, and average uh, functionality of the Jolt Transform. Okay, so how are we gonna do that? Well, in order to do that, we, we wanna leave our spec up here, the shift alone, because we still want to do all that but we want to chain into another spec. So we come down here at the end of that spec and we start a new one. And we're going to make it kind of simple here. We're just going to pull out what we need to start the spec. All right, there we go. So now we can start it. And from here, so the operation now is changing. We're doing a modify overwrite dash beta. And what we want to do for our first uh, change is let's use the min. So what, we, what we're going to overwrite or modify is going to be lost connection. So I want to get the minimum, minimum value out of this array of lost connections for every device there was, right? So we have five devices and we want to know what the minimum lost amount of lost connections were. Well, we can know by looking at it real quick. Well, that should be a zero. So let's go ahead and add that. The way we add it is to start ours here. Go ahead and add lost connection in here. And then from here, we get our double quote in there and we say equals min. And then we're open at open one comma and then it's going to be lost connection close it and then there we go and i missed something here okay make sure Nope, that's correct. Oh. There we go. Gotta fix my formatting. Okay, let's go ahead and format that real quick. Come on down here. And then, so that's in there. So we have lost connection. And then we're saying equals min, and then we're pulling out, we're looping through all of them, and we're doing all lost connection. Transform that, we get a zero. All right, now what you saw here is it took that array and it overwrote it with just a new lost connection called zero. So it just gave us the min, right? Now, if we didn't want to overwrite it, we could name it differently Hit that transform, and now you see we get both. We get lost connection, which is our original value. We have our array there, and we have a new value here for lost connection min, which is zero. 
But you know what? I kind of want to leave that and just overwrite it. So instead of modifying it, which is this is a modify, let's go ahead and overwrite and leave that there because I don't want the extra data. No reason to do that. I just want to clean this up. And... All right, so resets. On resets, we're going to do it a little bit different as well. And for resets, we are going to Basically, it's the exact same thing, so we need to swap out a couple values. First thing is we need resets in here, and then we need max. This will give us our max. So we look at resets over here, we have 2, 0, 0, 13, and 0. So we should have a value of 13. There we go. We overwrote that array with the value for the max value of 13. So there's our second one. So another one we have that we can do that I like to use especially is average. And I think the signal level is a great one to do against. So what's cool here is, like I said before, right? If this is the, these are all the values for every device in the main array for, and then, so we're getting every device, all five devices up here uh, for these IDs. And then it's going into antennas and it's pulling out the signal level for each one of them and it's adding them into one big array called signal levels, or signal level. And that's what we have there. So we have 25, if I remember correctly. Yeah, we should have five, right? There we go. So we have 25 different values. Now, what I want to do is get the average across all of those. So let's go ahead and do that one. So if you've already noticed, you may have already noticed at least, that it's very similar for these different ones and we can fix that in a minute but let's go ahead and add signal level and AVG let's go ahead and format this get it all cleaned up okay so now you see we have signal level and it's taking the signal so it's taking this result that we had down here and now we're going to modify that one or in this case we're going to override it as our end result and we're going to get the average for that after it loops through all those and gives us for a signal level. Transform that one and there we go. The average is 65, negative 65.72. So very cool. Uh, this is actually one use case I have in one of my work uh, data flows where it's very helpful. And I, as soon as I found out I could do this here and actually save myself a couple processors because before I was actually trying to accomplish the same thing. Uh, but I was after I got those results, and then took them into, I think a query record is where I took them down to. Uh, I was able to save myself a couple processors and come back up here and add it in here, which saves time. It costs less to, run, to do it this way in the long run because I don't have those extra processors running. So this is an excellent way. Now, if we go back to the Jolt Transform demo, we can see over here that we have a list of modify beta and under here we have math functions. So let's just take a look at them. We've already used the min, max, and we didn't do an absolute, but really it's just continuing what we already did. So min and max, and we actually use the averages as well. So you can average, you can do average int integers and then average doubles as well. There's sums, so we just want to sum up all those values. We could do that. You can see they're a little bit different. It's int sum and then they change slightly, and then double sum as well. Uh, they're all part of the same modify overwrite beta. Down below, we can also have examples of doing division as well. And then divide and round. So to give us do the division and round it for us. You can see those are right here. So here's some examples of the actual syntax and how you can use it. And then we come over here, we can see the examples themselves too. So what we're already doing, the, so you have the integers, the doubles. Uh, this one is the sums. The averages are in here too. So sum, averages, the sort uh, integer, and it's ascending back order. So over here we can see we have sort ascending. That's what that is over here. So it takes the values and just sorts them for us. And then we have the min max absolute down here. And then our division and then the rounding as well. 
So same same one, but rounded. All right. So that's where you can get some good information over here to help you figure that out. So let's go ahead and go back to our data. We have ours transformed already. You know, there's a couple things I don't want in here. I don't want to keep in here anymore. Let's go ahead and drop the, let's clean it up a little bit so we can get smaller. We can get rid of result type. We don't need ID, model. Get rid of those. There we go. Keep it nice and simple, right? So now we're down to a test ID, the result for that test that got ran across all the devices, uh, the timestamp, the loss connection, which in this case is our example for the minimum. Oh, oops, wrong one, right? Yep, our loss connection is our minimum example, our resets is our maximum, and signal level is our average. All right, so you can see though that the loss connection reset and signal level are all integers in the JSON. Well, what if I'm gonna move this data into something, maybe it's a table, and I have to have it as bar char for some reason or something like that. Uh, or maybe that's how I'm storing it, never know what I'm doing here. So let's go ahead and look at how do we convert these over to a string value. So what we wanna do is another step, which is our next operation which is going to be another modify overwrite beta. So we come back down here at the end of this operation, we're going to start a new one. We're going ahead and take from what we already have here to start it off. And then from here, it's really simple. Uh, we're going to use the two string. So how we do that is we just take lost connection. And then we go ahead and open it, say to string. And then what we need to do is close this a couple times. That all that, yes it is. Format this, push it, and there we go. Double quotes around our value there, so now it's a string value. Inside the JSON, we can do the same thing again if we want. To the other two values. So we'll take resets here. Actually, it's much easier if I just take all this. And then I say reset. And set the level. Transform all that, and now everything's string value. So depending on what your data is, or I don't know why you want to convert it from an int to a string, might, there, you might have reasons for wanting to do it, but just to show you that you can do that if you want to. You just create another operation which continues to modify. We started all the way up here with a shift operation. We got all those results and then we chain in another modify overwrite beta to get some uh, transforming done here. And then we chain in another one to modify the results here as they keep passing through. Uh, and now we have our last set which modifies the set of data we have as well. So those are a couple of different ways or a couple of different examples on how I use uh, Jolt Transform in my data. Don't forget to hit that save when you're done. So it gets applied to the processor. Now we can go ahead and quit out there, come back in here and we can see the entire spec is saved. There you go, there's our spec now. So we have multiple levels to it, multiple operations going on there and that gets us what we're looking for. Uh, there's many different ways you can use this. You can, if we go back over here, we have quite a few examples for the shift. Uh, inception, convert a nested data to a prefix soup, uh, map a list, list up to map, uh, on matches, complex and nested transposing, uh, bucketing for arrays. These arrays ones are pretty good, transposing data in an array. And what's kind of nice is uh, the examples are not just there, but they also tell you for most key information, like what's it doing? So. We know, like I explained earlier, right, the star here loops through the, in this case, it's telling us, hey, the star is gonna loop through the item order array. So come back over here, item orders, the star is gonna loop through that. And we can go in here, click over here to see what this example gives us for an output. Uh, if we look over here for bucketing, we can see there's extra information here, it explains like what the two brackets were for, uh, how they're being used here and stuff like that. It's very helpful. Uh, it can definitely take a lot of trial and error depending on what you're trying to do. 
uh, based on what the examples show and how you end up getting there. Well, hopefully this is helpful. Uh, this is the second video. This will be the end of uh, covering the Jolt Transform JSON right now, though, as I, that's really all I got to go over for it. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button down below, and I'll catch you next time. Bye.